So today we talked about the visual system in class. Visual system is really well understood. It's got this very cool layers of cells at the back of the eye that process the light. And we talked about the anatomy of the eye so that the light comes through the pupil, which is basically a hole. And then it goes through the vitreous humor, which is the jelly that keeps your eye looking like a sphere. And then it hits the back of the eye. And the back of the eye is very cool actually because it's the only place that the central nervous system can be seen from actually outside the body. So um, uh, ophthalmologists can look through an ophthalmoscope and see um, the retina. And so the retina has got these very cool layers of cells in it. It's got photoreceptors that um, come in two flavors. Basically, you have rods that can see black and white, and then you've got cones, which can see colors. So for us, as humans, we have three kinds of cones. We've got ones that can see red, ones that can see green, and ones that can see blue. And we kind of see color based on comparison between what those cones can, can see. So um, it's an evaluation of, of color, of wavelength of light coming in is, is seen as a certain color. And so rods in particular are super, super sensitive to light. So they can detect one photon of light, which is super cool. And then um, the cones actually are very, very plentiful right in the middle of the eye and they allow us to see color and detail. So like if you're going for a walk and it's dusk and you head out and it's light outside, you'll be using your cones to see and you'll be able to see color. And as you come back from your walk and you return home, it might be, you, you know, at six o'clock, seven o'clock and it's dark. And so when it's dark, you will actually be using your rods to see. And so it's very cool the way this works because there are these little molecules called rhodopsin, which is in the rods, and they're super sensitive to light. So they can get activated with one photon of light. And then they basically change their shape. When they change their shape inside this rod in the back of your eye, then um, it makes a change where it allows little ions, sodium ions to go across the membrane. And then the cell will send a signal to another cell in another layer of the retina. Um, called a bipolar cell and that will send a go signal to the ganglion cell and the ganglion cell then sends a signal out of the back of the eye down the second cranial nerve to the actual brain where these information pieces will be processed as hey we we saw light and it's a very cool system because you actually have this thing called lateral inhibition that goes on there. So what lateral inhibition does is you've got this column of cells that are going to be sending a go signal that you saw light. And the lateral inhibition part of it means that only the cells that are exactly in the path of the light, so the light is in the cell's receptive field, will be activated. And the cells on either side of it will actually be inhibited which is a really cool way of making sure that the signal from the light that is actually activating the one cell, that it gets paid attention to. And it will really precise in exactly where it is. And the other two cells on the other side will be inhibited. And this allows us to have this really strong response to boundaries or edges because the other layers in the uh, back of the retina are actually able to, to silence or to quiet the cells on either side of the one who's actually supposed to be getting the signal. So it's a very cool thing and it applies to all our sensory systems. And as we're talking about, you know, this receptive feel, it's not just vision, it's touch. So if, you know, I kind of poke myself, I can have a receptive field for one neuron here and the receptive field is specific to that one neuron and the other two um, places on either side of it in the brain will be silenced or it's the same uh, for aud auditory processing. So one frequency or one tone will make one part of the auditory cortex activated and it'll silence the ones on either side. And this is really a kind of an evolutionarily conserved process that allows us to pay attention to edges or boundaries, which makes me think about boundaries in my own personal relationships and how important they are and how thinking that having no boundaries makes you seem like an accommodating person and makes you seem like you're being kind, but really it'll probably set yourself up for long-term failure because boundaries are important. Too much? 
All right, so next time we're gonna talk about um, the way that the visual system actually processes the light coming in to um, the brain. Thank you for listening. Join us every day in May for a new video.